to Alexia through a direct message if you don't wish to post it publicly. They will make sure that all the questions get to myself, and then John and I will be able to answer them. Mm. Okay, how is so, that? Can everybody hear me now? Uh, you want to kill them, or? <laughs> right, we're going to have to chop Cody up and throw him in the lake. <laughs> Hmm. Hopefully. Maybe. Oh, Kat says she can hear. Cade can hear. All right. So, um, again, if you are having trouble hearing, yay, that works. If anybody says anything about have, having, if I can English this evening, trouble hearing in local, uh, within world, then they will need to toggle their media. If you guys could just kind of take care of each other and let them know that if anybody says anything, I'd appreciate it. Um, yes, thank you, KJ. Perfect. So, I'm going to start my whole spiel all over again. Yay, everybody in Discord gets to hear it twice. <laughs> the other voice that you will hear this evening is John, by the way. He is our executive manager. So, um You'll have to pardon the accent a little bit. You might get quite a few heyos and all that fun stuff, but that's just our typical John. That's a, um, have an accent. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit. But we are, again, at Pinewood Community Park. <laughs> if you want to join us in Discord, feel free to join us in Discord. There is a link within our group descriptions. If you need a link... Um, KJ can grab one and throw it in local for everybody, so that way they can join it. If you decide to hop in, please do not worry about voicing or not, because you will be server muted for the sake of keeping things running smoothly tonight. Uh, what else did I cover? Oh, AOs, if you're here, sit in the chairs provided, please. If you run out of chairs, let me know. I'll duplicate some. Uh, and make sure your AOs are turned off. Please also refrain from using gestures during the broadcast. That way we can try and keep noises and whatnot to a minimum so everybody can hear what's going on. We will be taking questions. They can be of the serious nature or they can be lighthearted. That is completely up to you. If you do not feel comfortable with posting your question in local chat in world, or in the OOC channel within Discord, then in World, you can message Lucy, and she will make sure that we get it. In Discord, you can message Alexia, and she will also make sure that we get it. Um, we have a couple people that will be watching the nearby chat and the OOC channel in Discord to make sure we don't miss anything also. If for some reason we can't answer your question, I know that sounds strange, but I'll explain it if that comes up then we will give you an explanation as to why. So with all of that, we're going to start all the way by the American flag. That is Alexia White Falcon. She is our general manager. Of CCMH. And she also handles our concealed carry permits and our medical disability permits. If you are interested in finding out any of those, then you can find them, the conceal carry on the MCSO page on our website and the medical permit on the CCMH page on our website. Up next, we have Furby Falkland. She is our GM over Little Wanderers and she handles all of our DMV stuff. And then we have John. Well, he's really important, but we'll get to what he handles later. Um, <laughs> Then you have me sitting in the middle, kind of tucked behind everybody. Uh, immediately to my left is Kat. She is our um, GM over the MCSO, as well as the CCFD. And then we have Lucy. She is our GM over events and Cedar Creek Public Schools. And next we have Cody, who we owe a big thanks to for making tonight happen. He's also going to be doing all the hard work and making sure the closed captions are on the feed once it's ready for everybody to view afterwards. He is our GM over RP as well as the courts. So 
If you have any questions, again, please feel free to throw them in. Uh, we can talk about pretty much anything. We don't really, we don't really hide much. There's a few skeletons, but you can find those at the bottom of the lake or in the Cedar Hollow graveyard. That's where we like to throw them all. Cade can attest to that. I think they dug up one at some point. Um, Nim is still alive and kicking, so there's no need to worry about anybody being thrown in anything anytime soon. Let me pull up Discord just to make sure. Well, you I know, haven't did, forgotten uh, anybody. Build out the basement on the crypt so we could fit more bodies in it. Yeah, trying to make sure all of them didn't resurface too much was that was a little fun. <laughs> Poor KJ. Yeah, you guys can ask throughout the entire broadcast. If we're talking about something that it doesn't necessarily relate to right then and there, we will get to it. Um, we'll just get we're going to try and cover one topic as clearly as we can at that point. So that's why I said if you guys don't for some reason feel comfortable getting it in local, then you can IM the appropriate people and they'll make sure that it gets to us so we don't miss anything. So in order to become a part of the criminal group, you literally just have to find one of the You Are Here boards that are spread throughout Cedar Creek and click on the joiner and it will automatically put you into the criminal group. Now, if you are looking to become a head criminal, there are instructions within that group description on how to do that. But if you are looking to just do small minor things, there are a few um, head criminals, there we go, that's the words I'm looking for, that are already reaching out to others within the group in order to get small little RPs going and some criminal activity here in CC. Let me find that real quick. KJ Cody sent you a message. No. Well, there you go, Luana. Nim's already got you an invite. And if I pronounce your name wrong, please feel free to type out the sounds exactly how it's supposed to be. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to butcher some people's names. Um, especially those with the crazy symbols. Yeah, we, we can just forget for <laughs> That's going to be a hard one. Lou, I can do that. I can do. That's a lot easier. So. Uh, many of you have never heard John before. Few of you have interacted with him. I like to keep him extremely busy. He's my go-to run all over the place whenever I'm not running all over the place to try to help with everything. Basically, it just means I hide on the platform. Well, there's a lot of work up there. <laughs> A lot of stuff up there. <laughs> yeah, there is. Well, if you don't make them angry, Lua, then you don't have to worry about them shortening it even more. <laughs> You'll be okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who do we actually have out? Oh, watch my frames drop as I came out to see names. KJ is sitting up front. KJ is one of our moderators. So feel free to give her a really hard time if you need help. Next to her is Nim. Nim is also one of our moderators and one of our head criminals. So any criminal questions? If you need further details on it than what we can provide you, you can hit her up. Uh, let's see who else. Art is our newest event coordinator. He is already well underway to creating some yeah, 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 you're a doctor too. That's not the important part. He's <laughs> <laughs> also uh, one of our newest event coordinators. Again, he's got some pretty interesting things coming up, so make sure you guys keep an eye out for that. Uh, so he doesn't feel slighted as Nim seemed to. Sorry. Uh, he is also a dispatcher for the MCSO and the CCFD. So you guys will ICLE speak to him a lot if you call 911. Let's see, who else do we have? Next to him, if I skip somebody, it's because I can't see you in the chair. Apologies ahead of time. 
We've got Andrew. He is a firefighter and a court clerk. Then we have Tina Lynn. She She's kind of multi-headed too. So she is one of the newest members with our real estate team. And she is also the blogger that we have been featuring um, through links and are going to be adding to the website as soon as I can get off my butt and get that page made. Um, <laughs> We're going to get a link for her put up there, and as well as some of uh, her pictures and whatnot, if she doesn't have a problem with that, what that is. So make sure and hit her up if you have any RE questions or if you're interested in more details on that. Then we have, I'm not even going to try your first name. We're just going to call you Mr. Hudson. Yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, he is new to our DOJ stuff as well. He is a Cedar Creek judge, so hopefully you guys don't have to deal with him too much in court. Um, Not yet, Tina. Not yet. Good luck, Tina. Mr. Hudson, you might want to pay a little bit of attention. You might see some of these people <laughs> across from you. Uh, no, that's I'm getting Art's name again. Then we have Violet Grayson. Violet Grayson is actually our newest department head. She has just taken over Little Wander's Orphanage, and she's doing a wonderful job so far. So if you guys have any questions about Little Wander's, then feel free to hit her up. Um, I know she is looking for some people to help her when it comes to dealing with the kids and doing stuff around the orphanage itself. So look at our... Cedar Creek website for, and then there's a community jobs link for any jobs that are available in CC. Um, please do not be surprised, though, if you are told that a position may not be available. We do try to keep a backlog of applicants so that if something does come available, we know who has already been interested and we can go ahead and reach out to those people. Uh, Rezzing in right next to her, welcome, Rosie. And then who's up after that? We've got Wit. Her and Ash just got married a few weeks ago, so congratulations. Wit is also... I'm, I'm missing something. I know I am. What, what else do you do here in CC? When my lack of knowledge of the residents comes into play. Yeah. She's on the fire department. That's it. I think. Maybe. She'll correct me if I'm wrong. All right. And then we have Lua. Everybody's already been introduced to her. Um, she's going to be our newest criminal <laughs> in town. <laughs> so you guys can watch out for that. Who is next? Next we have Ayla. Ayla is with our... Uh, fire department as well. Yeah, for some reason, Lua, I don't really believe that anymore. Um, and she is our EMS supervisor within that department as well. So if you are looking to do any kind of medical training, become a paramedic or dual between being an EMT and a um, firefighter, then you will be working quite closely with Ayla on that training. And then we have Edward. Edward is a teacher at Cedar Creek Public School. That will all be starting back up in August. There might be a little thing coming before then. They're working on that, so we'll have more on that as it progresses. We have Allie sitting a little past Edward. She likes to come and go. She just kind of sneaks right in from time to time and shows up at things. Always a joy to talk to, though, if you can manage to catch her at her computer. In the back, we have interesting people in the back. Why are y'all sitting in the back? We got Kimberly. <laughs> She's our assistant medical director. She's got her butt up in the front. Uh, so if you're interested in working at the hospital... If you have any questions about it, she's another one that you're going to want to talk to. And then we've got Livy Fang. She is also a realtor with Cedar Creek. Right next to her, we have her boss. So hopefully she doesn't say anything she's not supposed to 
here at the broadcast. Uh, we've got Cade sitting next to her. He has been with us for quite a while, so all of your, most of your landscaping on the lots and all of your home swapping, things like that, he's the man that you drive crazy for. And then not too far from him, we have Clint, another realtor. It's like the gang is just sitting in the back. Uh, next to him, we've got Courtney. She is our Chief Justice, again, English. So if you have any questions about the court system, any questions about the Cedar Creek laws or whatnot, she would be your go-to on that. And then next to her, we have Jay, who is also a self-labeled criminal. So thank you to all those who are attending in world. Hopefully you cut some names there. Tina just likes us. That's why she's up front, you know? Yeah. Everybody, the rest of the, the, rest real, of the real estate, estate team is scared. Yeah, I don't know why. They've done a fantastic <laughs> job over the last few weeks. Jumping on the questions. Cool people in the back. <laughs> now watch the back row <laughs> just like, completely fill up. And then there'll be nobody up front. Oh, maybe? No? Sweet. Everybody's going to keep their butts in their seats. Yay. I do not see you, little one. Oh, I, I got same chair. Oh, that's why. Because I'm not. I so my frames drop if I actually look at everybody's faces. If I look at the back of everybody's heads, they stay up. <laughs> Don't lie. So, with Mr. Hudson, we have got Evie. She is three years old, and the boss of Daddy and Rosie. I think you have your hands full there, Hudson. Mm. <laughs> We've got Ash joining us, too. He works with the MCSO as well. You guys will see him around town a lot. Uh, he also deals with our canines uh, on almost a regular basis. So if you see him around with a dog in a vest, you know, they mean business. I saw your yes. question earlier, Andrew, and uh, we are working on getting another sim. It's all in the process. Yeah, it'll be here at some point. <laughs> Gotta love when Linden Labs holds on to things. Uh, but as soon as we can get an available sim through our real estate people, then we will have a new one out and decorated for you guys and do a big announcement on that. Um, this is where being a resident also has a per has its perks. So whenever that does go down and gets ready to open, current residents will have 24 hours to relocate if they want. All you have to do is contact uh, a real estate agent in order to do that. After that 24 hours, it will then be open to the public and become a first come first serve. Yes, it did, Tina. Uh, you can just say it in local, Edward, or you can uh, message yeah, Lucy if uh, you don't want it uh, in local. Are you talking about Cedar Hollow, Tina? I'm assuming that's what John was just talking about, too. Because then my yes. answer is just going to be redundant. Yes, it was. <laughs> I'll wait and see what Edward has to ask. While he is asking that, just so we don't have any kind of dead air or anything, we will be doing this. Um, we're going to start out once a month to give you guys a chance to kind of chit-chat with us, ask your questions or anything like that. Uh, after this one, though, we will have guests up on the stage with us, so you may see department heads, you may see other staff members within those departments, um, you may see a business owner up here, or we might even do like a student or something from Pinewood, or maybe somebody who's had a recently really interesting RP kind of thing. Um, and if you can hear any background noise from me, I do apologize, my children are enjoying some Fortnite. But we are going to try and keep this so that it's just a nice casual thing for you guys to just kind of get your 
questions out there and get them answered in an appropriate time frame instead of it looking as if it might not be. We're having a radio broadcast, Ash. But you're going to have to let him get out of the house a little bit more. Watch the newspapers, a few commercials. So that is something that we are going to be working on. However, the biggest issue is a lot of the decor that is out for lakes and whatnot is not up to par with the quality that we decorate Cedar Creek, Cedar Creek with. I'm not going to put sculpty items in the water. I'm not going to put ugly looking seaweed in the water. I'm not going to put fish that just swim in a circle and look like they're paper thin in the water. Whenever we talk about realism, and we talk about the decor within Cedar Creek, it has to be of a certain quality. If it's not of a certain quality, then it's not worth having. So we are looking into that. Uh, you're not the first person to bring it up, but it is a bit of a process to find that kind of decor that is also going to fit within the prims that are left over in those areas because that's another issue that we run into when it comes to redoing an area is making sure the prims are there. Uh, with Cedar Bay, it's not going to be so difficult prim-wise, but whenever it comes to Lake Jasper, it will be, because we have to accommodate three separate sims whenever we do that decor. And it doesn't make sense to do that decor on a third of the lake and not follow it through on the other two-thirds. And Meadow Creek and Array, Whispering Meadows, all of them are pushing prims right now because we try to leave as much as possible for our residents to be able to use. So once we can find something that is up to our standards and can be done within the prims that we have available on those sins without hurting what the residents in the community are already used to, then we will get something put in the water. Thank you guys for having a seat and welcome. Yes, so we do seasonal changes through Cedar Creek. Um, what Lua asked, in case anybody can't see it, is she asked about snow. So we go through spring and summer have their decor that's pretty much what you see right now um, whenever fall gets here all of the trees and the landscaping and everything will swap over into pretty little oranges and reds and yellows there will be a few greens here and there just because we have some forever greens pretty much as decor uh, whenever winter gets here you will see snow uh, you will see snow mounds, you will see areas set up for snowball fights, you will see if we do another big blizzard kind of event, you will see things that are set up for like snow sledding, all of the trees will turn, um, we'll have drifts, black ice, all of that fun stuff. So we definitely go through the seasons. Yes, you will see cars overturned. <laughs> It's amazing, too, what we discover once all the snow starts to melt away and spring gets here because we find all kinds of things tucked in the snow banks. But it's so fun, Ash. Yes, winter is the it's one time that we go really hard. Oh, yeah. On uh, decor. You'll know when it's coming to because uh, you guys will be locked down on prims and everybody will start cussing me until they start seeing the snow come out and then they're all happy. <laughs> yeah, we'll start having some more rain off and on here. Go through our flood RP and give you guys a little bit of break and then you'll start seeing it kind of hit every now and then. My 
grammar Nazis going crazy over in another channel is interesting. <laughs> or Alexia. Oh. <laughs> yep. Oh, there goes Lua again. Her and her ankle monitor. Thank goodness this is no OC event, huh? <laughs> Good lord. Does anybody have any questions that are department specific? Even anything that's not something you might want to bring up that has been picking at you that you just want to ask if you want to pick on any of the managers up on the stage that's fine too we all pick on each other anyway um, yeah never mind them i'm just not going to touch that one what is your random question ash I'm starting to wonder if Ash can hear me or not. Well, he's got type two, and there's the delay. Yeah. I always forget about the delay. I expect that people can just hear me right away like they do in Discord. I think Cody said it was 20 seconds. Oh, that explains a bit. <clears throat> For the record, since there is such a delay, you do not have to, and I do appreciate it, Ash, because that was very respectful of you, and thank you for that, but you don't have to raise your hand or wait to be addressed in order to ask your question. Just go ahead and throw it out there. Um, if for some reason you do ask anything that is just very borderline, I apologize for my response in advance. <laughs> I am a very straightforward person, which a few of you are already well aware of that. And some of you will learn. Um, let's see. Within the three major departments, can request a bring your kid to work day. So that would be up to your department head if you want to be able to do something like that. Um, we would love for you guys to be able to take your kids to work on one day and have that be kind of like a town event for the day. But we also know that your department heads have different things that may be going on or they may want to coordinate it a little more to make sure that they have things that you and the kids can do even while you're at work. So I would coordinate that with your department head first. And if they want to make a quote-unquote event out of it, we'll go ahead and get flyers and things like that made. Um, your department head knows how to go about getting that event information over to me so we can get that listed where it needs to be. And Mr. Hudson, I was wondering if there were any plans on more events during European daytime. So it works a little bit of two way of it work. It's what am I trying to say here? It's a two-way street when it comes to European events. So from time to time, we will try to do Euro-based events on a regular basis. At the end, we'll go through a lot of work to do that. They get a little disheartened and go back to doing their regular schedule because those events are very poorly attended. Um, so you will see it from time to time. We try and stress to them to get Euro events done on a regular basis, but they also have a real life schedule that has to be worked around. If you are on Euro time and you want to apply to the events team in order to get events like that set up, um, then we will be more than happy to have you. All you have to do is fill out the application. You'll be interviewed by either myself or Lucy, and 
then we'll go from there. But we do try it from time to time. Uh, this one, since it's a management-based set right now, is a little hard to do because we have to coordinate all of our times. But um, we do try and push for that. But like I said, you guys have to attend those events too. If it's something that's going to be done on a regular basis, it has to have attendance. If it doesn't, then it's kind of a... It's, it sounds bad to say this, but it's a waste of the event coordinator's time. Thank you, Lucy. And so uh, something as well for general information, everybody uh, can hold two jobs. Some of them, they don't mix. Uh, like you can't be FD and MCSO. However, you could be MCSO and events or you could be MCSO and... Um, uh, another department, depending on the department. Like the school. And, uh, yeah, like the school. And your department heads usually know all of the uh, the combos that are not allowed. And if they don't, they ask. So, to get to you, Louis, what she's asked is about criminal background checks. Every IC department, so that is going to be the hospital. That's going to be the sheriff's office, the FD, the public school, um, the orphanage. All of those, because they are IC positions, will do an IC background check. This is where how you play your character has an effect. Because your character's RP has to kind of meld with the jobs that you apply for. Now, if you want to work real estate or events, or even be a moderator, which we're full on those at the moment, but we're still taking applications, um, then those don't require an IC background check because they are more OOC-based. But yeah, anything that is considered an IC position, how you play your character, that's where those consequences and things come into focus. No, KJ, an 11-year-old cannot be the principal. We have had this discussion, child. <laughs> Sit there and throw your little silent temper tantrum while you want. It's still going to be the answer. <laughs> However, if you are part of the school system, or not, as a child, you could set up a club. Maybe the leader of your club is called the principal. Go about it that way. Given the fact that you're wearing an ankle monitor, Lua, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that that IC background check is going to prevent you from being a principal. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> At least for the time being. Yeah, you know. for the time being. <laughs> yeah, I might hinder it just a little bit. So, since we are kind of on the topic of events, one thing we are looking for specifically whenever it does come to events, and we'll kind of go over things like this as we go through each department, um, is a youth specialist. Um, and what that youth specialist does is they are focused on creating events for child avatars between toddler ages and 11 or 12. And the idea is to be able to give you guys events that you can have fun with and enjoy things that your parents can drop, I see can drop you off at, or uh, things that might correlate with departments to do like a touch a truck day with the CCFD, or here you go, Ash, bring your child to work day. <laughs> Little things like that. So if that is something you're interested in, then please make sure you do fill out that application and the Euro base times. Welcome, Marianne, to the Discord chat. Fair warning, your server muted so you won't be able to talk, but we still bid you welcome. So there's different venues that you guys can get things out there, and you do not have to have experience to do anything in CC. Uh, you don't even have to have experience to do a moderator. Does it give you a leg up? Yes. 
but you don't have to have experience at it because we will train you. Going to have to go milk a cow later this evening, apparently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> somebody in that Discord server is going to understand that. Uh, <laughs> somebody in that Discord server will understand what I mean. But um, even to be a deputy, they will give you all the training you need to be a deputy. If you have a specific area you want to specialize within that, all you have to do is talk to your trainer. And they will make sure that you get that. Um, if you want to work with canines, then they will train you to work with canines. If you want to be a detective, then they'll give you little things that you can do in order to better your skills at being a detective in order to get to that area within MCSO. CCMH is the same way. Uh, they've got residents. They've got nurses. They've got chief residents doctors for different specialties and they all go through training. Marianne even likes to throw these little random cases at them to see what they're going to say in order to keep their minds fresh and to give them different ideas on how to um, getting distracted too easily on how to handle them so that way it forces them to think outside the box in more of a second life venue. Uh, little wanders they will train you for everything and that that is one position that the only thing you need in order to do well at that is just patience and a like for RPing with children. If you don't like RPing with children, for the love of God, please do not fly little waters. <laughs> I don't think Violet would be too happy. <laughs> but, I mean, that's all you, everything else is literally just a story being told. Something for you to have fun with. The CCFD is the same way. They will train you for every little thing. You don't know how to hold a hose or what button to push on the engine. Guess what? You'll be taught. Furby used to do CCFD stuff. Absolutely no experience on it whatsoever. In fact, that's where she started in CC. Mm -hmm. Same. Actually. Had no idea what the hell she was doing. <laughs> and worked her way all the way up the ranks. And had fun with it. Yeah, clear. We we know. We can tell by those RPs, Alexia. <laughs> uh, and coffee. Violet's like, yes, you need patience and lots of coffee. So it's not. It's not. Some of these positions we understand can seem a little scary. You're welcome, dear. Um, but we will give you everything that we possibly can to help you succeed within any position in Cedar Creek. So don't be afraid to apply for them just because you don't have the experience. Who popped into the Discord? Alette's been here for a while. Sorry, I didn't say hi to you earlier. Ash hopped in. Katie's already been here. Lua, we've talked to. Mary Ann. Moo to you too, dear. Uh, Sarah popped in a bit ago. Chaz is our newest member. Welcome. So, kind of like I covered earlier, Chaz has got a question in Discord. Might not like the answer to this, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. And he is asking about when there will be more teen events because it's been dead. So, we had a question earlier about Euro events and how things have to be attended in order for them to become a regular thing. So for a few weeks there, there, were a, there was a teen event every single week. Some of them were even rescheduled, but there was very little attendance. So she is trying to do teen events again on a regular week, but she's also trying to cater to the community right now since the teen events aren't being attended on a regular basis. So they're going to be a little hit and miss for the next couple of weeks. But since you have asked, I will make sure that Cam knows there is more interest in them again. And we'll see if she can get back to doing them for you guys. All we ask is that you do your best to attend them. She did sign up for being that better be an appropriate gift. It is. Good job. <laughs> we know that history. <laughs> I know it was tempting. That's why I was like, before I click on my Discord screen, that better be an appropriate gift. <laughs> oh, 
Um, so Alette says, I don't think I'd be able to do an event coordinator for kids, but I did sign up for being a kid DJ. That is a great segue. Thank you. Al Alette, please tell me I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, I'm just going to call you Miss Shea, one or the other. Um, so Art has taken it upon himself to send out a little questionnaire application kind of like thing, uh, requesting for DJs and stuff like that for the events team. If you're also interested in being volunteers for the team whenever they do RPs like wait staff or if they do something for the kids in order to help kind of quote unquote babysit the kids while they're there to lend an extra hand, reach out to them and let them know. Um, we can also, we also have another link that I'll have Lucy send out later. And that's kind of a generic thing. Excuse me. To get volunteer counts up for that. But it's a great way to learn how to further your RP and to have a different venue to stretch your legs a little. Marianne has entered chat range. Chaz, the relationship you and Furby have sometimes astonishes me as to why she doesn't just smack you in the back of the head. You and your Miss Hannigan. Oh, see, I'm glad you alluded to that too. So, <laughs> ready? This is probably... Evie, Rosie, I do apologize, but I'm pretty sure you are very well-behaved children on a regular basis. But... On to the child abuse thing. If you are going to push those limits, and if you are going to be disrespectful, smacking a child is not child abuse. Just going to throw that out there right now. Now, if she's going to beat you to try and beat some sense into you, not in my community, Chaz, it is not. Good luck. If she's going to beat you senseless, that's a whole other thing. Then she's going to go to jail because we're going to arrest her for child abuse. She can't do that. But especially whenever it comes to uh, parents or if you, like with the MCSS, we've got some kids, not all of you, but some of you that like to push those limits with the deputies on the basis that they can't do anything to you because you're underage. This is not true. Yes, thank you, KJ. There is a difference between beating and reasonable discipline. If you're going to push those limits and you're going to put them in a situation where they either have to defend themselves or let you beat the crap out of them, they are allowed to defend themselves. It is not fair to ask somebody who role plays as an adult within a department, to not be able to dish out consequences that I see Lee they can do to somebody who is an adult behind the screen that role plays as a child. So please do not mistake that your avatar's age will get you out of consequences within Cedar Creek. Because it will not go the way you want it to if you think that that is the case. Now that my little high horse rant is over, <laughs> what else has anybody got? So that's another one of those that depends on the RP. Now, if it's your child and they hit you, you're their guardian. It's within your parental right to discipline that child. Now, say, since Chaz is in here, say Chaz walks up to you, Lua, and your URP, I think he RPs is 15. Am I, am I right? Okay. So he RPs is 15. You know, if he walks up and he just hauls off and hits you for no reason, you can defend yourself. Uh, restraint, if you can get a hold of their hands and restrain them or find somebody to go yell for somebody to call 911, something like that. If you are in fear of your life, especially, I know this is an OOC event, so I'm going to throw that out there, especially with you being pregnant, 
Um, if you are in fear for your life and he's over there wailing on your stomach, you are well within your rights to defend yourself, say, with a taser. The only thing that we ask and that we restrict a spotty 15, <laughs> the only thing we ask and that we will be more onto the restrictive side of is whenever it comes to things like shooting them or stabbing them, anything that could be construed as excessive force. We don't want you to beat the crap out of the kid because they're wailing on you. But at the same time, consequences, if they still have to be there, everybody can't just be running around scot-free because they decide to RP under the age of 18. So they still have to have their consequences too in order to keep the RP fun for everyone because if we let one group kind of run all over everybody else, then it takes the fun out of it. And that's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid that free, too much of a free reign. We want you, we want everybody, not just one specific group of people, but we want everybody to be able to have fun in CC. And that's what most of the rules and regulations try to instill is that it gives everybody that chance to have that fun. So if for some reason you do get a little excessive with it, we'll pause the RP if we see it, say it happens in township, or if they want to pause it, we'll have a discussion, try to figure out a compromise in order to allow the RP to continue, and then we'll just kind of rewind it a little bit so that you guys can keep going, and then we'll watch over it to make sure that nothing goes haywire. But yeah, because all of your RP choices, just like you've learned, Lua, when it comes to applying for positions, have RP consequences. Yeah. I don't mean to pick on you. <laughs> just realized it kind of seems that way. So I do apologize for that. Oh. Y'all should see the OOC Discord right now. It's kind of funny. Even Jay getting in on it. Y'all, don't gang up on Chaz too much. He's been well behaved the last week or two. We want to try and keep it going. Yeah, actions have consequences. Don't pull a Lua. <laughs> Chaz, you are only well-behaved when you want to be, and that's not very often. It makes for some pretty interesting RP, but you and I both know that. See, now you sound like Lua. Ain't nobody going to believe you're an angel. Love these little segues. We've gone through all the jobs. We've gone through child RPs. Kate, you got anything from way back there? You sat at the back so it wouldn't be called upon. Yeah, no, it doesn't work that way. So, Lou, for future reference, we all know how Miley Cyrus turned out. Posting her with a halo over her head is probably not the best idea. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I'm going to have to get my whack a noodle out so I can beat Cade with it. Oh, never mind. He's typing now. Nada? Nothing? Oh. <clears throat> I wonder sometimes. Well, it's a perfect time to jump back to the MCSO canines. The MCSO oh, so just showed two up. perfect canines that are just, just mean handlers. Is anybody good with dogs? They're perfect. Ash is like, me, me, me. So, is the other, this is another one of those you don't have to be experienced in it. So, a lot of the canines... Okay, I'll rephrase that with Ash's most recent comment. Recent comment of my canine is really on a lot of the active canines. <laughs> it's that way. Um, 
They will assist you. If you have questions, just reach out to them OOC Lee, on how you may need to handle them or react to them. Excuse me one moment. Along with uh, being an MCSO K9, Roscoe is also one of our uh, newest moderators. And they are very, very good at making sure that if you're not too sure how to RP with the K9, they'll lead you through it best they can. And if you're just not a, a para role player, they, they adapt. Don't, don't, don't let his, hmm. Ego? No. Don't let Roscoe's charming, goofy looks. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of a good way to say that. Um, lead you to believe that he is always the quote-unquote good boy. Pup definitely has his faults a little bit and probably can't hear me unless he's got his <laughs> media turned on. But, yes, he is a very good dog when he wants to be. It's kind of like having a Chaz, just with less temper tantrums. Did I walk in on something? <laughs> you want to message him and have him kick his media in? <laughs> Well, he could just... Oh, yeah, maybe not. No, nothing to see here. I don't get to poke the little cub too often, Chaz. You have to deal with it. Usually you're on inactive whenever I'm not. <clears throat> Mm. <clears throat> yeah, no, poking bears for you would be a bad idea. So, right now it is getting ready, set, is, wow. <laughs> one more time. Yep, one more time. Right now, it is getting ready to open for an exhibit that you saw in the events notice go out. So, it's going to be open from Wednesday, 10 a.m. SLT time, to, just a little bit, to midnight Sunday. No, Roscoe, I didn't say something to you. I said something about you. There's a big difference. You had a whole lot to say. Yeah. Paragraphs worth. So it is actually going to be a speak of the devil. He just jumped into yeah, the court. I, I, I knew he would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the event that's going to be going on at the zoo is a um, dinosaur and asteroid exhibit. And it's going to be set up again from Wednesday till Sunday. After that, what comes, you'll have about a week before something else pops up. But we're going to start doing some little exhibits to kind of give a multi-experience for a while. And then we'll go and do a big, huge setup that stays out for a month or two. But that way you guys don't get tired of the same old thing sitting at the zoo all the time. Because once you visit it two or three times... It gets a little boring because things aren't swapped out. So that's going to be a constant rotation of, of things. Well, that's... That's the idea of it, is to kind of provide a different, because Ash says, I like the zoo being an obstacle course, that was fun. Um, the idea is to kind of create a different adventure each time you go through it. So when we did the uh, 
rainforest stuff, you guys had rope bridges to go on and the traverses to go across and things like that to kind of give you a different feel and you had to really look for animals as if you were in the middle of a rainforest. Um, with this one, it's going to be walking through just to kind of give a short experience when it comes to how dinosaurs looked and what some of the skeletons are in an asteroid field of sorts. And there's going to be little things for you guys to do too uh, closer to the end of that walk. So you'll have some interaction and some picture opportunities. Um, and then the next setup after that will be a different walkthrough, a different mode of transportation through it, and a different set of animals surrounding it. So you do get to have those nifty little adventures. No, you cannot do a take a zoo animal back home for the day. Sorry, Chess. That's just we've already had lions. No, we had tigers. We already had tigers escape. That <laughs> just no. Yeah, at one point we had a polar bear escape too, and then we've got animals that just weren't at our zoo that seemed to escape from there for some reason. I'm not too sure about that. A bear, a lion. Um. Right now, the orphanage does not do animals. That would be the only place that you could take an animal home from unless you find a stray out in Cedar Creek. But we will not permit the sale of wild animals. <laughs> uh, since Art is here, we'll go ahead and let him make a note on Ash's idea of doing a trivia night so we can see about getting that going at one point. Uh, what else? Yay, Jess is on her way. I wanted to sell a bear. I mean, we can put somebody in a costume for you, Lua. That, that's about the best I can do when it comes to a bear. <clears throat> in Discord, I'll let, uh, alludes to... Loving equestrians, and that we, Alexia mentions that we also used to have a riding club in town. So, as far as I know, if you are a student, at least, at Pinewood Public School in August, Miss Laura will be back to do her equestrian class. Um, so, you will be able to get riding classes in through there. If you are not... Um... We may have, because there is some interest in it, maybe the kids will start up another riding club, but we may talk to Laura and see what we can do about offering something to the general public every once in a while, too. I'm not promising that she will be into it and cap or not capable, but be able to do it time-wise, but it's at least something that we can look in for you. Lucy, can you make a note of that for me, please? And as for horses, you are welcome to ride them around town. Mm -hmm. We even have stables and summer romance. I do believe at the moment they're all full. Uh, however, they do come and go. Sorry about that. My headset decided to cut off on me. Um, to you, Chaz, we don't sell children for body parts or organs or for sim funds or for hush money or any other thing that you're going to throw out there in regards to what we might sell children for. The orphanage is a dangerous place because children go in there and disappear never to be heard again because they get adopted out. And they enjoy their families. Furby, I am going to beat you. We do not do a two-for-one sale at Christmas. If anybody sees Furby kind of like in a Selling corporal children. punishment kind of setting, please just keep walking. <laughs> Congratulations, Ash. They will be adopting a Rosie come Friday. 
Thank you, Chaz. I greatly appreciate that. Something in me tells me I should make sure to let you know that I greatly appreciate you not posting a gift in that regard. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Violet, I'm going to let you... Yeah, you can deal with Furby. Because all these people are going to have to come to you. <laughs> so she's creating some nice little fun for the orphanage right now. Um, if she goes missing for a little while, we'll just, you know, just let me know you send her on a little vacation. <laughs> no, you can't do it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Somebody needs to ask a question or turn this conversation. Welcome to all the new people that have popped into the Discord. Who's that? That's, uh, I know that one's Peter. Fire 43, that's, um, Thomas, some, Thomas something? Yeah. No, you can't. Oh, jeez, Louise. KJ, help me. <laughs> All right, Lila wants to go to work with somebody for a day. Just be careful. I don't know what she did to get the ankle monitor, but she's got it. No driving. Oh. Well. <clears throat> hmm. Have a good night, Hudson family. Thank you for coming. We do appreciate it. Take care. Yes, dead, dead silence. I don't. Yeah. So, moving on. I, I, I know things are going to get a little hairy with Peter in there. Thomas was apparently stolen from Candy Mountain. I need to find out where that mountain is. It sounds like a place I want to visit. I thought you guys would be full of more questions than this. Well, let's see, event-wise, we've already gone over the dinosaur thing, and then uh, on Friday, oh, Art's first event, everybody has to go out and give him support, let's use that word, and give him support. <laughs> you said that awfully weird, you know? For <laughs> support for his first event in Cedar Creek, he's going to be doing a community camping event. So from 5 to 7 on Friday, you'll be able to go to, uh, which ones is it? The Cedar Hollow campsite for a little bit of mingling and campfire stuff, right? Yeah, sure. Maybe some marshmallows. Don't anybody fall in, please. Um, there's also going to be a live performance there by Sinjata Wit. So you guys will be able to enjoy that. If anybody would like to stay longer and actually camp through the night after Art's event is finished, you guys are more than welcome to. Those campgrounds are free for you guys to use for campouts, for crime scenes, for chit-chat, for running through, for horses, because there there is enough space within there to be able to meander a horse through. The only, excuse me, the only thing that we ask is, unless you're setting out a crime scene, of course, that... Whatever items you set out for your camping expedition, just make sure that you pick them up when you're done. But you guys are more than welcome to use that outside of Art's camping event. So hopefully everybody has some fun with that. On July 3rd, here you go, Chaz. 
there will be a movie for the teens at the teen center. It will start at 3 p.m. So we got a question. That's up to the events team, Ash. Ash asked if uh, they were ever going to use the drive-in. So if you are going to use the drive-in, you need to use the drive-in before October gets here. Because I take it over when it comes to doing our fall and Halloween stuff. <laughs> it makes for a great area to do a corn maze. The drive-in is up all the time as well. Mm -hmm. We don't take it down. Nope. So, we have a couple of questions when it comes to rentals. One, why are rentals so expensive? So, within Cedar Creek, you're not paying just for us to make a profit. Is the profit good? Yeah, sure, of course it is, whatever. But we turn around and we use the money that Cedar Creek gets from rentals and not only do we pay tier with it, but we also pay all of our department employees. Each department is given a budget for how many people that they can pay. And all of these people get paid for the hard work that they do. Our department heads, our event staff, our real estate, our deputies, our doctors and nurses, the court clerk, the bailiff, the judges, the lawyers, the canines, um, the teachers, the moderators... I think that's everybody that I know I'm missing a few roles, but so you pay for the quality, not just the land that you rent. Um, it also covers a lot of the things that we offer for free within town, especially when it comes to events it's from the live singers and the different kinds of decor that they set up and the random things that they have to buy, because we don't expect our people to actually pay for all of that themselves. They are able to ask whenever it comes to doing their event positions or even for, um, like, whenever the MCSO has a big event or they want to do a tournament, prize money, that kind of thing. All of that you has the option to be reimbursed or paid through... Huh? I'm sorry, I'm sure no OC chat. Oh. He's asking who pays the criminals, and, well, they pay themselves. <laughs> they pay themselves, I see, Lee. Um, but we use all of those funds to pay for all of that. Because our people work hard. They shouldn't have to use their own lindens to go out and get this stuff. Um, you, the prim rental prices, that's what I'm talking about. Also range depending on the kind of lot that you get. So if you want just a small cabin still parceled, it's 200 prims, 360 lindens. Same thing with apartments, however, the apartments aren't parceled. Why are the apartments not parceled? Because RL-wise, anything that shares a wall is not going to have privacy. That's why your apartments are not parceled. Um, small lot, medium-sized lots, larger lots, waterfront property, they all have a range. The more space you get, the more features you have available to you within that lot, the more you pay. That's just kind of how it works. And then all of that gets poured back into the community. Now, the next one in regards to real estate was, can you ask for less prims on your rentals instead of more? You can. Uh, Cade actually has a setup <clears throat> for the least amount of prims that are allowed to be rented for on a property and the most that are allowed to be rented for on a property. So if you want to do a decrease in your prims, all you have to do is submit a ticket or talk to a real estate agent and they will be able to help you with that. You don't have to necessarily keep what is posted. You do have some space to go backwards and some space to go forwards. Now, going forwards does depend on each sim that you're in, because each sim will individually get maxed out over time. Yes. 
and we do limit the max amount of perms that you can have on most lots. Um, and the reason for that is to help with lag, because the more stuff that you try to cram into a smaller space, the more laggy it can get. Just because of scripts, because of collisions, the textures that have to load all of that stuff. So if for some reason they tell you, well, you already have the max perms that you can get on that within that lot, that's the reason why. Um, and if they tell you, well, we can't do prim increases right now, that's because there's not really any to give to anybody <laughs> because everybody's already gone up or there's something else sim decor wise that could be eating it up. And whenever that happens, we do go through and try to minimize as much as we can or swap things out. If there's a less land impacted option available that still meets the quality of CC. Yeah. And something real estate does, which is very uh, good in that regard is that, um, they will, uh, if you ask for a prim increase and they can't give it to you, they'll either offer you relocation to a place where it will allow you to get a prim increase or just generally has more prims or make a note on the rental log that whenever prims do become available, that they will see if you would still like that prim increase and they will get that done for you. Mm hmm. Uh, and there was a right, question trying to catch up on asked earlier in OOC. Yeah. So uh, Thomas asked, is there any major sim wide events coming? So we won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the bad thing with the major sim events is that we try to keep as much of it a surprise as possible. So that way you your reaction to it is a more genuine reaction instead of a prepared or planned reaction to it. Um, the only people who usually know when a large RP is coming up is most of the management staff. The last one, I left some of them in the dark too because I wanted genuine reactions. Um, we'll throw together an RP coordination team as well in order to do some of those major RPs. Um, but there is a lot of planning that goes into them. We're, we're in the middle coming up on midsummer so to give a general idea sometime between late summer to midfall we might have one you can always count on one being in the winter at the beginning of winter and you can always count on one being at the beginning of spring but those are the only two that you can really ever know that they're coming because those are our major weather events. If you are interested or have any major sim wide event ideas, send those on to Cody. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to review them. And they don't all have to be weather related. It just has to stick within the covenant. Uh, Furby is going to beat somebody. Okay. That was covered. Oh, we already went over who paid the criminals. Sorry, guys, trying to make sure everything's taken care of. <laughs> Peter, you might want to have a conversation with Ash. Chaz, this might be the only time I tell you this. Thank you for your honesty. Thomas might have gotten played. That could be a problem. I think he means on the, uh, the Santa. Does Santa come to Cedar Creek? Yes, Santa does come to Cedar Creek. So, John, you can talk about that. I'm gonna get some water. <laughs> so usually uh, around Christmas time, for at least uh, two days, there is a uh, meeting with Santa. It uh, took place last year at the Angel Cove Aviary area. Uh, we renovated the place to uh, make it all work and make it all look like a bit of a winter wonderland uh, with Santa off to the side for uh, kids to uh, visit, tell their list to Santa, 
for Santa to interact with them a little bit, get a picture, and then they can go off and enjoy the Winter uh, Wonderland part or just go home, whatever uh, the uh, child and their parents wanted. Uh, some folks, they uh, hung around and they just chit-chatted for a little bit while others were getting their pictures done. And it's uh, usually a fun little time. Yeah. Make John get all dressed up. Santa does not come in on a on a wrecking ball. I'm sorry. I mean, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> He's too old. I'll break a back or something. <laughs> Uh, we do not do Christmas in July. Let me rephrase that. We have not done Christmas in July in the past. Now, if one of the event staff wants to plan out something like that, they're more than welcome to. Um, but it's not something we do on a sim management created thing, if that makes sense. We have 4th of July coming up, which... We're trying to get something planned out for that. Everybody's schedule is all over the place this year, so it might have to happen on July 5th instead of July 4th. And then, especially with summer being everybody's, excuse me, vacation time, it's really hard to get in-depth with the Christmas in July setup. There were more than a few people, Tina, who just visited Santa on their own. I had more than a few adults take a picture with me. And that's fine. I also have a stool for some of the older folk. <laughs> and teenagers. Oh, Lord have mercy. <clears throat> Lua Court is open for anybody. They are public hearings. Um, if for some reason it turns out to be a private kind of setup, then there will be an IC reason for that and an IC notice sent out and you'll see the deputies or NPC deputies set up to keep people from getting into the court and that kind of thing. But other than that, it is completely open for everyone to attend. Um, if Cody and Courtney would, we can get a schedule set up to go out with the event listings so that everybody knows when court's going to happen. Now, if that does come up, please bear in mind that there are a lot of people that the court time has to be coordinated with. So it does often go through a very last minute change or a last minute rescheduling. So if it does get put on the events calendar and for some reason it doesn't happen, there's what, one, two... Three, four, five. Not counting witnesses that would take the stand, there's six people that court has to be coordinated through. And once you factor in witness testimony and everything like that, it can be upwards of 10 to 12 people. Phantom brings you steak and stuffed animals, huh? That's good to know. Must have ate the steak before we got up Christmas morning because I don't remember finding steak under the tree. Yes. <laughs> okay. That one. Yes. Ideas or questions that you might have that. Um, you don't feel like getting addressed tonight or don't want to ask tonight, you can submit through the support ticket system. Um, you can all, so if it's an event idea, we prefer that you guys submit it through the support ticket system because then we literally download a PDF for event ideas and we forward it to the event staff. Um, most of your ideas can be submitted that way too, but if you feel like it's something that may need a little bit of a work through, then feel free to jump in a manager's box and just say, hey, I have an idea, and give it to us that way. Oh, Peter's talking about dumpster fires now. Yay! Try 
trying to catch up on OC. I think I'm there. A Thanksgiving event. We actually have had a Thanksgiving event every year. Um, there's usually two or three done, one before and one after. So that way um, a multitude of people can enjoy it. I think last year we also did one for Canadian Thanksgiving, didn't we? I think we did. I can't remember. I'm almost sure we did. So if there is going to be a big summer event, Andrew, as I covered earlier, we're not going to tell you until the last minute. Because we want genuine reactions, not pre-planned reactions. Yes, we already covered trying to do something on 4th of July, but it might happen on 5th of July instead. Maybe. Because everybody's schedule is all over the place right now with this year's 4th of July being the first one in a year that they've all actually been able to get out <laughs> to enjoy. Because we couldn't do that last year. So to jump back on the events uh, thing a little bit, uh, if you have the ideas, you can send them into the sport ticket. But, but if you just have an event that you are looking to put on, you can uh, fill out the event request form, or if you uh, and it has a bunch of uh, the different information for your events. Uh, that's really one. If you know what you want to do and you know it fully, then that's the route to go. So, don't anybody pass out, Chaz. If you can come up with the details. For that to icily work as a game of sorts and not an actual hunt down and kill, send me a note card on all of it and we will see what we can do. People do not give him ideas. Make that man do his own work. <laughs> oh my God, several people are typing. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes it's, it is actually a huge stress relief sometimes because we've done this once or twice in the past where you guys get to do something that involves roasting an admin in some way, form, or fashion. And it's fun. It gives everybody a chance to get out, get rid of that stress, to see the admins kind of have fun instead of the constant us running around and changing things or fixing something or modding a situation or picking up this item and picking up that crime scene and returning this car here and fixing that snow piece there. You don't get to shoot and kill Chess. Sorry. That's what you want to do. You're just SOL. Uh, so, yeah, having an all out something to do with the admins would be fun. Yeah, we did an admin roast with the CCPD one time. Why not? Come up with the details, send it to me in a note card, and we'll see what we can do. You're not an admin, doofus. <laughs> mm. We did do the dunk tank last year. And then we had the auction, too. Yeah, that <laughs> auction would be, would be hard to do now. Cody bought everyone. He did. That was before yeah. he was an admin. Paid a lot of money for uh, for some of them too. <laughs> right? There were some bid wars going on there. Paid. We are not doing a purge night. You're just gonna have to get over that one too. Oh, part of your events. People is writing down all this stuff in the OOC chat right now. Um, Yeah, there's a few escape rooms. We've done a couple in CC. But 
it out for the cops. All right, guys, we are coming up on 530, which is when this is supposed to end. So if you've got any last minute questions, I'm good at dashing dreams, apparently. That's what I'm told. Very few hard no's, though. Usually there's an alternate or an alternative to your idea. Like, well, we can't get that working that way, but let's try this. Like I gave Chaz a minute ago. It'd be real easy to clean a house. About land, objects, refresh. <laughs> All right, guys. If we don't have any more questions, we'll give it a few seconds because I know there's a little lag. Then we're going to go ahead and call this a night. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Oops, good Lord. Yeah, you don't, want to, you don't want me decorating. Trust me. No. No, no. No. Um, Again, we're going to do this. So, Chaz, you know there's this thing called the Gift Me More channel, right? Did you also know that as long as you don't make any comments on anything, you can pretty much post whatever you want in there. It is marked as a not safe for work channel. So that's where all the inappropriate ones can go. As long as it's a in GIF, your chances of getting in trouble are zero. Well, zero to one. There's like a 1% chance that you can get in trouble for something in there. Now, the only thing you have to be careful about is the letters that you let come out of your fingertips after you post that. Because if it's not in a meme or a GIF, then you have a 100% chance <laughs> of getting in trouble. <laughs> All right, then. Appropriate ones? Oh, see, chat. All your inappropriate stuff, gift me more. All right, guys, so since we haven't had anything else besides Chaz and his craziness, we are going to go ahead and call it a night and thank you, everybody. Once Cody gets all the closed caption stuff set up, then we will get a link out to you so that everybody can go back and review this if they want to. Thank you guys and have a wonderful night. Take care. Mm -hmm.